Hey guys, happy Wednesday. How are you? It's April from Mama Loves Food and Dinner Hero. Yay, happy new year. We're back again. Woo, we just got row washed out. I don't know what just happened there. Hopefully it'll self-correct. Anyway, I hope everyone's having a great night. It's Wednesday, I think I already said that. Um, and we're gonna do some major meal prep. It's the beginning of the year, it's the beginning of the month. I like, I mean, I always like to have my proteins prepped as you guys know, it's kind of my whole philosophy on cooking and getting dinner on the table. Um, in the evening, so we're gonna do a whole bunch of that tonight. We've got chicken, steak, pork, and turkey, and we're gonna do all of them at once. And I'm gonna show you how you can get like 11 billion dinners ready at once. And you guys, you know what? My comments aren't showing up, and I don't have a phone. So, oh, there's my comments. Hi, Miss Beverly. Hi, Amanda. They were just delayed a second. Okay, so I'm gonna pop over here and do some real quick sharing while you guys come on. Let me know. Um, that you can see me, that you can hear me, where you're watching from, what you're drinking. I'm enjoying a tangerine seltzer, uh, mandarin orange seltzer tonight. It's very delicious. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Amanda. Two minutes in a row. Hi, Miss Patricia. Okay, so I'm going to pop over here. The live actually hasn't shown up for me yet. <laughs> did everybody have a good new year? I hope you did. I hope everybody had a wonderful new year. Oh my goodness, you guys, the live isn't even showing up for me yet. Hi, Miss Michelle. Hi, Rhoda. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Tina. Hi, Lisa. How is everyone? Hi, Gabrielle. Okay. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. Where are you, live show? Ooh. We went live on Mama Loves Food, right? I hope so. Oh, there we are. There we are. Found us. Orange slices candy snacking. Oh. Are they the, like the orange, like the actual candies, like the really chewy ones with the sugar on the outside? Favorite, it's my favorite. I love it. I always get those on road trips. It's so good. Okay, I found us. All right, we're gonna do some quick sharing. I apologize for the hair situation. I took a shower this morning, let it air dry. This is what I look like in real life. <laughs> Hi, Kathy from Webster. Hi, Kathleen. Hi, Wada. Hi, is it Wada or Wada or something different? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so bad at names. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Gail. Patricia's enjoying her dinner hero book. Yay! And they've finally arrived, you guys. I really appreciate your patience for us working out the kinks. It was kind of a nightmare over the holidays dealing with shipping, you know, everybody's doing their holiday shipping, and then we came in and wanted our stuff shipped, and anyway, but it's been worked out now, so I'm really happy about that. Okay, so we're gonna do our, I'm gonna do this real quick sharing. I know I've said that like three times now, but um, doo -doo -doo, we really are gonna do this, and then we're gonna go ahead and do, like I said, we're gonna do a whole bunch of meal prep prep. We've got chicken, turkey, um, pork, and steak. And we're going to do all those tonight. So we're going to first share to Miss Lynn's page, 365 days of baking. Hi, Miss Gail. Hi, Jamie. Happy Wednesday. Hi, Janet. Wada. Thank you. Wada. I'm going to try and remember that. Okay. And we're going to share to... Hi, Miss Grace from Boston. Hi, Denise from Michigan. Barbara from South Jersey. I'll never forget that. Thank you for sharing, Miss Grace. All right, we're gonna share to Dinner Hero, our page, and those of you that don't know who we're talking about, we have released oh, our new binder cookbook, which I'm super, super excited about. Yay, you can get it at dinnerhero.com. It's got uh, about 50 pages of meal prepping, tips, tricks, how to do it, and then uh, I think 78 recipes. Really easy, really simple. Um, teaches you how to stock your fridge, stock your pantry, stock your freezer so that you always, always, always are able to make um, 75 different dinners, right? Or 78 different dinners. I know I ended up with a weird number, but I didn't want to pair it down. <laughs> We're going to share to Miss Emily's page, Life So Savory. Did you guys watch her so earlier today? Hi, Miss Michelle. How are you? Proud owner of a new Dinner Hero book. Yay! Hi, Miss Rebecca. Hi, Jody. It is available both in the binder if you like that form or as a digital, um, if you like that, if you want to carry it around in your pocket. Hi, Jody from Minnesota. I'm actually, I just planned our, our Christmas, not our Christmas, we just had Christmas. I just planned our summer vacation and we're spending the summer in Minnesota. So I'm really excited about that. We're gonna share too, Miss Jen's page, Princess Pinky Girl. I hope you guys have visited all these pages. They're wonderful. 
Thank you, Miss Denise. Thank you, Patricia. Hi, Tiana. And I know the website, if you go over to the Dinner Hair website, it's going to say everything's still pre-order. It's just because I haven't gotten a chance to update the code yet. It is not in pre-order. If you, if you purchase tonight, it will ship tomorrow. It is no longer in pre-order. I just need to change the language on the website. I haven't gotten around to doing that. It's been a little busy since the year started. All right, I'm going to share to my page, Mama Loves Food. Hi, Miss Laura. Hi, Chrissy. I know. Can you believe it? I'm chopping it all off next week. I can't do it. It's too much. I don't know. We'll see. I change my mind every hour. But as of right now, I've decided it's all going. It's going to be short again. I just feel like it doesn't know what it's doing with its life right now. Hello from Minnesota, Miss Angela. Hi, Maria. Hi. Is that Delvia? What a pretty name from Ohio. Okay, we're going to share to... Miss Holly's page, Quirky Mama. I swear we're almost done with this. I know this is the boringest part ever. Go get yourself a Chardonnay, a glass of sparkling water, whatever you like, bag of pretzels, chips, anything, whatever you want. We're going to do meal prep tonight. Those of you who are just tuning in, I'm going to let you know we're going to do lots and lots of, okay, we're going to share two, last one, spaceships and laser beams, and then we're going to share into the groups. Um, thank you, Miss Deanne. Um, so we rented a, ca a lake house for a month. I don't know if we'll actually stay for a month. It was cheaper to do it as like a month deal than just a couple weeks, which was weird to me. But um, so I don't know exactly how much time we're going to spend. But all right, we're going to share to the Mama Loves Food group. If you're not in the Mama Loves Food group, please join. We love to have you there. We hang out all week talking about food, family, all those fun things pet peeves, happy things, anything you anything you want to celebrate or bitch about, we do in there. And then I'm going to share to the Dinner Hero group, if you're not in there, it's a super secret club for those of you who have purchased the Dinner Hero book. So I'd love to have you in there. And if you've purchased the book and haven't joined, make sure to join. Please do. Okay, now we're going to send our Text message alert, I promise. I know, this just takes forever. You guys, it, it, it drives me crazy too, I promise. Oh, what did I just do? Um, sorry, I bumped, the, I bumped the screen where I didn't mean to. Okay. Go next. Subscription. Send now. Hi, Miss Karen. Hi, Ahmed. How... Long time no see, boo. Thank you, Miss Margie. Hi, Rosario. Hi, Debbie. Hello, Dalen. How are you? Hi, Linda, Missy, Heather. Oh, my goodness. Okay, that's been sent. That's been sent. And we are good to go, guys. Okay, I have the oven preheated to 350. We're going to throw some chicken in there in just a minute. But first, we're going to go ahead and get started on the Instant Pot. And I'm going to tell you what I got. I got... I've got chicken thighs. I tried to get chicken breasts, but um, my grocery store was completely out of chicken breasts. Is that bizarro? Totally out. Um, so I got chicken, I got boneless, skinless chicken thighs, which is fine. It's a good second. Um, I got some really inexpensive steak. I got uh, a just a hunk of pork shoulder, and I got some ground turkey. So we're going to prep all of those, and we're going to we're gonna divide them into, I'm gonna do two pounds. So the book, Dinner Hero, has everything, calls for one, every recipe calls for one pound of protein. Um, my family's bigger, so I double every recipe. So I'm gonna do two pounds in a package. Um, and, and then we're gonna be prepped. We'll be prepped for dozens of dinners, which is amazing. So we're gonna go ahead and bring our packages of meat over here. I promise I have not been sitting on the counter for hours. I literally just came home from the grocery store. I'm gonna use the Instant Pot, I'm gonna use the oven, I'm gonna use the electric griddle, and I'm gonna use the electric pan. Those are the things we're gonna to use tonight. You don't have to have those things to do these methods. You could use you could use a slow cooker, you could use your stove top, you can obviously use your regular oven um, for all these things. And in the Dinner Hero book, we have about 50 pages talking about how to, pro you obviously don't need the book to do these things, right? But if you want a good, concise, um, explanation on how to and a lot of recipes to use with them that is a good resource um, but we do spend about 50 pages teaching you all different ways to cook your proteins ahead of time so you don't have to have any one specific um, utensil or kitchen gadget or you know if you don't have an instant pot you're gonna still be 
able to do plenty of meal prep. That's not a problem. Okay, so we've got our chicken thighs here. We've got our steak here. Like I said, I just did a really inexpensive cut of top round. Um, it's nice and lean. Tastes great still. We're going to use it for fajitas and um, tacos and um, stuff like that. So got the text. Yay. Hi, Miss Peggy. Hi, Mom. Everyone say hi, Mom. Mom Mama's watching Mama. All right, and then we've got our pork shoulder, and then we've got our ground turkey. I did ground turkey breast just because I like it. If you like a little bit more um, fattiness to your meat, you could do um, just ground turkey, or you could just do ground beef. Ground beef works too. Um, all of the recipes in Dinner Hero call for either chicken, steak, ground beef, meatballs. I think that's it. Um, but they also can all be interchanged with other things. So we always put in the notes like, hey, this one calls for chicken, but it's great with tuna, or it's also great with sliced steak, or blah, 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 blah. So don't ever feel like you're pigeonholed. Okay, one of the really important things to do before you meal prep is figure out how much meat you have, right? So we say one pound portions when we portion it out, but it's actually one pound before it's cooked, right? So um, if you weigh it after it's cooked, you're gonna be you're gonna end up with a lot more protein in your meal than um, anticipated. So we've got four pounds of ground turkey, so I'm just gonna write four pounds. So that will be four meals for the average family of four, or two meals for my giant family. We're gonna just set these aside. Oh, set those aside for just a minute. We've got a pork shoulder also called a Boston butt. It is not the butt, it is the shoulder. Actually, I'll tell you in a minute, remind me, I'll tell you the story of why it's called a butt roast. Uh, we've got five pounds of that. So we've got five pounds, I'm just making a real quick note over here, so when I portion them out, I know how to do it. Hi, Miss Gertrude from Toronto. And then I've got, let's see, two, four, so, wait, no, sorry, three, six, nine, eight. We've got eight pounds of chicken thighs. Eight pounds. And then we've got, let's grab these over here, two, four, six. Just a hair over six pounds, so we'll just call it six of uh, steak. Okay, so we're going to add this up. That's 14 plus five is 19 plus four is 23. So that's 23 pounds of food we're cooking right now. That is 23 meals prepped. What? We're going to do it nice and quick. Hi, Miss Cheryl. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Kristen. Hi, Melinda. Slightly burned tonight. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know why. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start with the one in the Instant Pot because that's going to take the longest. And I'll tell you, we might be finished prepped with the other things before the Instant Pot one is done. Um, and if that's the case, you're just going to have to trust me that it worked. <laughs> I'm just getting this stuff out of the way so I, get it, so I want you to be able to see the Instant Pot. This is just a cup of water that I measured out. We're going to put at the bottom of the Instant Pot. And then you can see my book. Just in case you're, just in case you're okay. My hair is something else tonight, man. It is really something. Okay, we're going to plug this bad boy in. I have the six quart. I know a lot of people swear by the eight quart and they say, oh, if you have a big family, you need the eight quart. I like my six quart. I really do. I've never had a problem feeding my family of seven with a six quart. I always have leftovers. So, I mean, I realize my kids are still kids, so maybe as they get older, I'll lump eight quart, but I feel like for now the six quart does a good job. All right. So, hi, Miss Robin. My friend just sent a request to join to watch. Oh, well, that's exciting. All right. So, we've got our, our butt. So the butt is called the butt because way back in the day when butchers used to butcher, I mean, they still butcher the pigs, but when they, you know, uh, they would butcher the pigs and they would put the pieces in crates. They'd put the, you know, the shank over here and the loin over here and the ribs over here. And they would put the shoulder in the very last crate, the butt of the, of the crates, the end of the crate. So it's called the butt rose because it was in the very last crate. All right, we're just shoving that in there. Pitching that, I'm gonna wash my hands super quick because that was gross. I'm right here. I feel like we're split a little to the left today. 
Alright, I am not seasoning this. If you guys have watched here before, you know that I like to season when we add it to a meal. But you can also, hi Miss Vicky from Denver, I love you too. Christine says I have a 10 quart for four people. Look, I'm not judging if you have a bigger one or want a bigger one, that is wonderful. I'm just saying I've actually felt like my six quart was enough for our family. Um, you can do a light seasoning on yours if you want, but I like to be able to um, season it. You know, if I want to toss it in some teriyaki sauce, um, down the road, that's plenty of water. Okay, so I just put in about a cup of water. If you have a, an eight quart or a 10 quart, you're gonna wanna make sure you have more than a cup of water. I believe it's one and a half cups for an eight quart and two cups for a 10 quart. Um, but make sure you read your manual. So we're gonna make sure everything's tight. We close it, we're gonna put it on sealant. Oh, wait. just make sure. Yeah, we're good. Sometimes if you use it a lot, this gets gummed up, but feels good. So you're gonna line up the arrows. Slide it over. Make sure your knob is set to ceiling. I'm gonna put it on manual, and which is high pressure for those of you who have different. Uh, oops, no timer. No, no, I said no timer. Wrong button. Sorry. Okay, manual, and then I'm gonna put this up to. I'm gonna do like 70 minutes. I think it's a pretty big roast, and I like mine really. I like mine to pretty much just fall apart. I'm gonna go ahead and do 70 minutes under pressure. So what that means whew, is 70 minutes under pressure. So it's going to come to pressure and then it's gonna cook for 70 minutes under pressure. And then it's gonna, um, you can either, you can either quick release, which would mean I would take a wooden spoon and I would smack that valve and it would go and all the steam would come out quickly or you can natural pressure release. It's generally a better idea to natural pressure release with um, something like a roast so that it doesn't um, pull the moisture out of the meat. It's not the end of the world. With something like this that's cooked so long, it's not going to become tough. But in the Instant Pot group, some people get a little crazy about that. You should not be afraid of the Instant Pot. There are so many um, fail safes on it. It's very, very unlikely that anything bad is going to happen. It's just going to turn off and your food's not going to get cooked. You look lovely, Miss Jamie. Okay, we're gonna do the chicken next because the chicken's gonna take the next longest amount of time. So I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna grab this. Here's our chicken, 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 chicken. Hi from Australia, Miss. Is it Euphemia? That's a pretty name. I'm terrible with names, you guys. I, I'm sure I'm butchering that, but it's a beautiful name. All right, so I've got, what did I say? We've got eight pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Again, we're gonna go real plain because these are gonna get added to other recipes later. What would you make with your cooked proteins? I can't see comments, how do I turn them on, ugh. So a lot of times, try just swiping the bottom of your screen, you might have swiped them off. So we're gonna pile these in, we're gonna do these single layer, but really close to each other, nice and squished in. And I find that when you squish them in like that and they cook all right next to each other, it does take a little bit longer, but I think, I feel like they come out, sorry, I'm just, my garbage pail is scooted over today. Um, I feel like they come out moister, more moist. We still use our pressure cooker, but not with the valve, 30 years. Now I will say stove top pressure cookers scare me. Those do scare me. All right, but not with the valve. So I think that means you're not actually pressuring right? If you don't have a valve on it. My sister's two dogs went crazy whenever they used the pressure cooker. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder, does it emit like a high um, noise? That's really interesting. Our dog does, is not bothered by it in the slightest. Okay. Uh, I tried to scoot it over a little bit, but apparently not enough. So can you guys see that I'm really, I'm really squashing it in there. Like I'm gonna, and I've got a whole other thing to add to it and I'm going to do that. Um, but I do find that if you put them in real tight, they kind of cook in the juice, cook in there in juices and stay nice and moist, which I like. Hi, Miss Stacy. How are you? So, uh, I like to make stir fry with the chicken. Obviously tacos, duh. Ooh, there's a little bone in there. That's what she said. Sorry. 
They were small dogs. Mine's a small dog too. A little white fluffy thing. I'm trying to remember. I think we had the un instant pot when our other dog was alive. Never bothered her either. Um, barbecue chicken pizza. Chicken spaghetti. I so enjoy you, Miss Diana. Thank you for being here. All right, we are just gonna squash these bad boys in. Just get them all in one thing. Like I said, you want a single layer. You don't wanna put them like directly on top of each other, but you can squish them in good. And these ones I am gonna salt and pepper just a little bit, but just that's it, just a little salt and pepper. Maybe a little garlic salt and pepper. Okay, what would you make with your chicken? Can't see the comments either. Try it. Did you try swiping? Did it work? Did it work? Okay. Can you guys see that? Nice and squished in. I'm going to turn the sink on real quick. Hopefully you can still see me. I'm still here. Do some leg raises. You like my new boots? My sister bought me boots for my 40th birthday. I bought her boots. When she graduated college, she always wanted cowboy boots. So when she graduated college, almost 20 years ago, um, I bought her a cowboy boot. So she knew I liked her cowboy boots. So she bought me cowboy boots for my 40th birthday. Swiping doesn't work. Does Xing out and coming back work? Okay, so, oh, what did I say? I'm gonna, I'm gonna salt and pepper this real quick. Where's my pepper? Sorry, I know people hate it when I leave the screen. I know, I hate it when people leave the screen too. Thank you, Miss Melody. Tap on the screen if you're on a cell and it brings comments up. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. So I'm just gonna do a touch. You don't even have to do this if you don't want. What I'm gonna do is a touch of cracked pepper. You could do a seasoned salt. Just a little olive oil if you wanna. You do not have to. You can do these totally plain, just like we did the pork, but we're gonna do this. And these will take 40 to 60 minutes. We'll check them at like the 35 minute mark just to see how they're doing. And then um, they'll probably take, I would guess 45 to 60 minutes. Depends on how tight you have them packed in, how accurate your oven is, right? Okay, so I'm gonna pop these in the oven. Can you guys see? Giant tray, this is eight pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. We're gonna pop them in. open while you're adjusting things and putting them in. <laughs> Hi Angelina, we are just doing lots of prep tonight. So we've got a five pound pork roast in here. We're gonna do shredded pork. We've got eight pounds of boneless skinless chicken thighs in the oven. We are about to set up and do, how many did I say? Four pounds of ground turkey breast in our, where to go? In our skillet majillet. And then we are gonna do, what did I say? Six pounds of inexpensive steak. And those will be used. Then we're gonna package them up. I don't know if I'll do that part live, but I'll package them up at some point in individual portions, not individual portions, individual meal size portions to be used in later recipes, which is like the whole premise. You guys, I've been, sorry, I keep forgetting I'm out of the screen. Um, hi, Stacy. So, this is kind of the system that I've been cooking with for years and years now. And what I do is I always have frozen, um, frozen meat, frozen protein in um, one or two pound portions. And then I have, you know, frozen vegetables, canned vegetables, starches like potatoes, you know, um, potato flakes or couscous or pasta or rice and then I have my seasonings in the cabinets and I have chili seasoning and um, taco seasoning and fajita seasoning and um, dressing mixes and marinades and sauces and then I always am able to combine them 
and make dinner, basically at a moment's notice, because I always have these things in my pantry. And what I did this last year was I spent my evenings and weekends writing a book, exactly how I do it. So you guys, at dinnerhero.com, you can get my book. It spends 50 pages teaching you how to stock your kitchen, how to prep your proteins. It gives you a full, where did it go? I just skipped right past that page. A, a full shopping list. Um, I know it looks long, but I promise it's not. Most of it is really basic stuff that you already have in your house. It goes through all of the different uh, ingredients that we like and why we like them. It goes through every protein and how uh, you can prepare it, how to freeze it, how to prep it for freezing. And then it's got bum, ba, da, bum, uh, 78 really simple, delicious, family-friendly recipes. Um, and you can get that at dinnerhero.com. We also have tons and tons of totally free recipes on our website, but obviously the website doesn't teach the full system. But you could just watch me here if you want. But I'd also love if you supported us about the book. <laughs> Do you freeze in containers or baggies or both? So, you know, I'm torn on that. That's a great question. Um, tonight I'm gonna freeze in containers because that's what I have on hand. It depends a lot on what my freezer space looks like, right? Like if I hit a big sale and I have a really, really full freezer, I'm going to freeze in baggies because baggies going to take up the least amount of space. Baggies are only going to take up, um, you know, very minimal space. They're going to take up exactly the amount of space that the meat takes up. Whereas I find um, containers take up more space, right? Hi, Miss Crystal. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, I'm glad you're excited about the book. Um, and those of you who go to the website and see that it says pre-order, it is actually not in pre-order. I forgot to go in and fix the website today. If you purchase today, it will ship today. Well, shipping's closed tonight. It'll ship tomorrow. Um, so yeah, so we are out of pre-order. It is not pre-order anymore. It is just a normal order and um, it will ship. It does come media mail so that we are able to um, charge very low shipping. Um, so you can figure it'll take about a week to get to you. So, but there's also the ebook and the ebook bundle if you want to be able to start cooking like right away. Um, Melinda, the book is, I believe it's $37. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong for the binder version or $17 for the ebook. And then we also have bundle plans, so if you want to buy it for you and a sibling, or you and a friend, or you and your mom, or just want two copies, maybe one for the lake house, um, there are bundle deals. Or if you want to get, you know, the ebook with the um, an ebook and a physical copy, there's a bundle for that as well. Hi, Miss Nancy. Ah, oh, I'm so glad I encouraged you to do that. I love that. I love my kitchen. It makes me happy. So we're just, we've got our ground turkey in here right now. Again, I'm adding nothing to it because we're going to turn this into chili. We're going to turn this into tacos. We're going to turn this into sliders. We're going to turn this into pizza. We're going to turn this into calzones. We're going to turn this into casseroles. We're going to turn this into all kinds of different things. And when we do that, then we'll go ahead and season the whole shebang. Um, and we don't want a whole bunch of competing flavors. We don't want our dishes over salted, right? All right, you can hear it's about to come to pressure real soon. Let's hope it does. It didn't come to pressure on me last week and that made me real angry. <sighs> but it mostly works. If it never worked again, I'd have gotten my money's worth, man. I use that thing almost every day. <laughs> <laughs> I've had it. You guys remember when I unpackaged it, right? It was like three years ago. I would be sad if it stopped working, though. If it stopped working, though, I think I might use it. Have you guys seen the new Star Wars ones? They're very exciting. Maybe I should hope for it today so I can get a Star Wars one. Um, yes, Miss uh, Tatum, or Mr. Tatum, is that Miss or Miss? I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm sorry, your picture is like, oh, this small, I can't see it. Uh, yes, so I freeze. I mean, I'll leave, I'll probably leave three pounds in the fridge because I'll use them, you know, for the rest of the week. Uh, but the remainder of it, I will label and put in the freezer. And then I'll be able to just pull it out and either defrost it. If I'm making like a chili, I'll defrost it right in the food. If I'm making, 
um, you know, if I need it for casserole or something, I can deposit it in the microwave if I'm in a rush, or if I remember, I'll try to pull it out, you know, the morning or the night before. Hi, Miss Leslie, how are you? Why don't you seal into the heat and seal bags? Oh, I've never tried a heat, what's a heat and seal bag? I don't know what that is. Teach me, teach me, teach me. I would love to learn that. Are you talking about like vacuum sealing? I've never tried vacuum sealing if that's what you mean. And if you mean something else, I'd love to hear more about it. This makes me want to cook several main meals too, even though it's just hubby me. I did this when my when it was just my husband and me. I totally meal prepped because sometimes you just don't want to deal with it. And this doesn't cook your meal all the way. That's what I love about this um, system. And anybody can do the system. You don't need the book. The book just makes it a whole lot easier and gives you a lot more ideas. So I'd love for you to buy the book, but you don't have to. Um, so I love the system because it's basically meal planning without planning, right? When I meal plan, when I traditional meal plan and go, okay, Monday we're having tacos and Tuesday we're having pizza and Wednesday we're having casserole, it never fails that Monday rolls around and you know what I don't want? I don't want tacos. You know what I don't want on Tuesday? I don't want pizza on Tuesday. You know what I don't want on Wednesday? I don't want casserole on Wednesday. It never fails. So this way of meal planning assures me that whatever my fancy is that week, I will be able to have it because I can turn these components that I always have in my home into um, the meal of my dreams <laughs> or my kids' dreams. I need international shipping. I'm so sorry, Diana. I don't know when that's coming. I don't. I, we just went through such a nightmare with the shipping company, getting it all sorted out just for domestic shipping. And it is sorted, and everything's shipping beautifully now, and I'm very happy with them at this point. But we did have a hiccup or two, so I don't know at what point we'll be able to do international shipping. I do hope it's soon. But for my international friends, you can get the ebook immediately, and if you want to send that file over to whatever your local version of Staples or Office Depot is and print it yourself. You are more than welcome to do that. Um, one cup. <laughs> Please don't print a bunch of copies. That's not allowed. But you can print a, a personal copy for yourself, obviously. Um, so yeah, that works. <laughs> I'm like that with preparing clothes to wear. I never want to wear, right? I'm the same way. If I put if I put it put jeans out the night before, I'm like, oh, in the morning, like, mm, nope, that's not what I want. <laughs> All right, so we're almost cooked on this turkey. We're getting close. And this ground turkey, I'll just sub in anywhere. Oh, goodness, sorry, I'm getting a weird notification. I'm just, I'll just sub in anywhere that the book calls for ground beef. I'll sub in ground turkey to make it you know, a little more calorie friendly since I just ate literally everything the last month, all the things. Love the prepping idea, but I also traditional meal plan or we would never have supper because no one would agree. And I think that's what, if, you know what, if that works for your family, I think that's great. And you can certainly traditional meal plan with this. There's no reason you can't, you can't say, we're making this on this night and this on this night. Absolutely. Um, and I should clarify, I don't ask my kids opinion what they want. <laughs> they don't get a say. That is not a thing in our in their lives. Um, so I don't do it to make their lives better. I make it to do it my lives better because I don't always want what I have meal planned. Um, I can't see, it cuts off um, after the agree part. I can see there's dot, 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 that there's more to your comment. So hopefully I'm, I'm not ignoring something that you're saying, but uh, yeah, so. You can absolutely traditionally mail it, and actually, if you purchase the book, in the back of the book um, is a calendar for you if you pref if you like to mail plan that way. So, yeah. Hi, Miss Care. Is it? Uh, sorry, to really see me. Hi, Miss Carrie. We've got pulled pork. Or oh, let's see. It came to pressure, so it's at it's at sixty seven. So we've got sixty seven more minutes under pressure, and then we'll let it natural pressure release about ten or fifteen minutes. And it'll be perfectly beautiful, shred beautifully shreddable. So it'll have taken a total of about an hour and a half, maybe a little bit less than an hour and a half, to do what I would normally do in the oven at you know 200 degrees or in the crock pot at um, you know low for 10 to 12 hours or high for four to six hours. So that really, I mean, is pretty incredible that you can cut that down to 
um, such a little amount of time. And then we've got um, several pounds of chicken thighs in the oven right there. You would love the mix and chop tool from Pampered Chef. Ooh, that sounds like fun. Um, and then we're going to do, I've got some steak over here that we're going to do on the griddle in just a minute after we're done with this. So I'm trying to just keep this nice and chopped up. And so what would you guys make? I'm curious. What would you guys make with all this prepped protein? What, what would be your first few meals? I'm also not getting every comment, by the way, guys, if I, I just realized. What brand name is your pressure cooker? Mine's an Instant Pot. Um, I, yeah, the, it's the brand Instant Pot. And if you go on the website, if you go to Mama Loves Food, um, we just recently did, oh, I might not have included it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. I did my 20, 2019 year in review. I just said 2017, 2019 year in review. Um, and I linked to it there. I also always have it in our Amazon shop, which Kelly can link to. Kelly, are you still on? I think Kelly's on. Um, you can see the one I have there. I have the six quart, which I think is perfect. Turkey chili and turkey tacos. Yes, yes. And we have an amazing turkey chili in the cookbook. And then we also have, I'm sorry, we have amazing chili in the cookbook that I will sub turkey for. And then I also have a, a turkey chili on the website. I agree with the mix and chop. I've tried off brands, but Pampered Chef one is the best. Oh, that's fun. Egg roll in a bowl. Yes, I do love an egg roll in a bowl. We have an egg roll in the bowl website at mamalovesfood.com. Super delicious, super easy. And I've been enjoying, do you guys remember we meal prepped those egg roll in a bowl burritos, which was kind of a little fusion mashup situation. I have definitely been enjoying those. So if anybody was curious how they turned out, they're definitely non-traditional, but they're yummy. So I'm not complaining. Put a little stretch on there. Hi, Miss Kelly. Kelly's here. Poor Kelly. Kelly doesn't love it when I do these super late shows and I don't blame her. <laughs> Uh, hi, Miss Loretta. Is that say Loretta? Sorry, it's a little steamy. Uh, this is ground turkey. We're cooking ground turkey. We're just doing some protein prep. And I'm going to call all this done. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug this. And I'm going to go ahead and let this cool before we, we don't want to put it in, we don't want to put it in containers super hot like that or it'll pulled pork sandwiches, poutine, nachos, and tacos. Poutine, that's one we need to add to the book. Although we don't have fries in there, but we could figure something out, right? Like a poutine-ish. Can you make a wonton soup one night? I've never made wonton soup, but it sounds yummy. We should, we could probably figure it out at some point. <sighs> Turkey Alfredo, tacos, chili, spring rolls. Ooh, I like that. I like it. Okay. So we're bringing our steak over here. Wah, wah. Those of you thinking we are eating... Thinking we are eating fancy, we are not. This is just a really inexpensive top round London broil cut into a steak, uh, $5 a pound. So very reasonably priced, great for fajitas. I mean, it's great on its own too, um, but it's wonderful in you know fajitas or um, sliders or anything like that. Kelly says, I had the best egg roll ever tonight. Thanks for sharing, Kel. <laughs> All right, we're going to bring over our griddle. My favorite things in the world. I bought this for my husband for Christmas one year, and I think he gave me like, that eye roll. Like, oh, she got me an appliance for, my, for Christmas. Um, but he uses it almost every day, so I don't think he minds too much. All right, we're going to go ahead and put this bad boy in. Let it get heated up. And then I'm going to just real lightly salt and pepper these steaks. Ground turkey to make sloppy joes. Yes, sloppy joes. Crab rangoon the size of your hand. That's a big crab rangoon. All right, I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab a little bit of olive oil. And I'm peeking on these chickens. They are not even close. I didn't set a timer though, so, oops. About how many meals, nights are you prepping for? Oh, and I'm a missus. Ah, thank you for clarifying, Mrs. Tatum. Um, okay, so this is 23 pounds of meat. 
which equals 23 dinners for a family of four. I have a family of seven, so it will be roughly 12 dinners for me. Plus, it'll give us a little bit of leftover. So I would say it'll give us 15 meals in my family. Like 23 if you have a more normal sized family. <laughs> All right. There's that. And then also, if you just don't eat as much protein, I figure a quarter pound of protein per person about um, when we plan a meal. So if you're not, if your family's not as big protein eaters, you could certainly stretch it more. You know, you can put more starches in your food, you can use more beans, more rice, more potatoes, more pastas, um, and stretch your meals definitely farther. Hi, Miss Jackie. Stir fry with the steak, yum. Hi, Nancy. We just sprinkled them with just a touch of garlic, salt, and pepper. Remember the flavor or, or add oh never mind my it said I lost my internet but I came back um we want to keep these really clean so that they don't affect the end result of the meal right so if I salt these up really well and then we put them in a meal that we're going to salt again um it's just going to end up way too salty if I if I season these with you know uh, Montreal steak seasoning and then I put them in an Asian dish it might not work so we're going to just do real light um, salt and pepper and olive oil on these um, and really you could even skip that you could even just put them on totally plain um, we're gonna go ahead and turn this on I meant to get the heating and I forgot hi miss Carolyn I know we just lost our internet for a hot second so hopefully it's come back and we're good I know we just lost 200 viewers which is a bummer bummer Okay, so we're going to go ahead, that was just a tiny bit of olive oil, and then we've got our salt and pepper over here. Can you guys give me a comment if you can see me? I feel like we're going in and out a little bit. I'm just using the tiniest bit. Again, we do not want to over-season our food, because this will be used, and again, um, much in the same that we don't want to over season it we also don't want to um, cook it uh, overcook it right so I'm actually gonna um, do these pretty darn rare and then we're gonna slice them because remember they're gonna be added to something else later and they're gonna be warmed up again and you don't want them to be chewy and rubbery and gross uh, can you repeat how the chicken thighs were done so we just put the we stuffed the chicken thighs in a big roasting dish I put a little bit of garlic, salt, and pepper on them and um, put them in at 350 and it'll, they'll take about 40 to 60 minutes just depending on how many chicken thighs you have in there, how many, um, how accurate your oven is, how tightly squished they are, blah, 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 blah. How many times you open the oven to check on them because you forgot to set a timer. <laughs> not speaking from experience or anything. Amanda can see me, Victoria can see me, Miss Marilyn Harris is here, hello. Uh, Chris can see me, Cynthia can see me, Carrie can see me. There's a piece of padding stuck to the bottom of steak closet. <gasps> Thank you for that. I mean, they're not going in the oven, so we would have noticed it, but I appreciate it. <laughs> that, was, that would have been embarrassing. I mean, it was embarrassing, but. I don't get embarrassed easily. Do you guys have any questions? Hey, hey. Everyone say hi, Aunt Marilyn. All right. So we've got this skillet heating up. We've got our steaks over here looking all gorgeous. I want to get a nice hot griddle so we get a good, little bit of the sear on them. They're not going to have a great sear on them. doesn't really matter because, again, we're going to be putting them in stuff, but... But, 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 she's a butt, mom. Also, I feel like I should warn you, if you're watching with your kids, typically we keep it friend, kid friendly, but it's not a show meant for kids, so we've definitely had, you know, occasional F-bombs slip out. Um, it just is who I am. Do you prefer garlic salt or garlic powder and why? I prefer garlic salt. Cause I like my food really salty. 
Um, but if you prefer your food less salty, then I would go with garlic butter. I think they're both good choices. Ooh, that smells so good. That smells delicious. Pretty excited about the smell that's happening right now. I use both though. I feel like they're both very good. But I, I typically reach for the garlic salt because it's an all-in-one. You should check out Tactic Calories Seasoning Company. They have the best seasoning. Oh, cool. I like a good seasoning company. Alright, we're going to scoop this into there. We're going to let those sizzle for a while. Then I'm going to do something a little... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. We need this. Come back. Come back. We're not done with you. <laughs> Isn't the top round steak too tough? Nope. So, nope, nope. Is it tougher than ribeye? Yes, absolutely. It is not well marbled. It is very lean. You can see just by looking at it. It is a very, very lean steak, right? And the more lean, the more tough. But you're going to want to sear it. Don't cook, don't overcook it and cut it against the grain thinly. It'll be delicious. It's perfect in fajitas. It's perfect in stir fry. It's fantastic. How will you heat up the steak and chicken when you're going to use them for dinner? So I typically will, if it's in a casserole, you're just going to stuff it in the casserole and then, you know, just like you would any cooked casserole. Um, but if you're thinking like a stir fry or something like that, what I do is I cook the stir fry until it's just about ready and then toss the chicken or steak in at the very end because you just want to warm it, right? We've already cooked it. You don't want to recook it. You don't want to make it tough. You don't want to make it dry. So you're just going to stir it at the end, just enough to heat it all the way through, make it warm and yummy, and then you're going to serve it. Um, with something like a um, taco, I might toss it in a pan, like just super, super briefly again to warm it, um, you know, with the, with the warm seasoning. I'm going to let that go just a touch younger. I never use garlic salt. You can control the amount of salt better. Yeah, so if, you, if you're watching your salt, then definitely garlic powder is a better choice. I like things salty, so it's incredibly rare for me to feel like something got too salty. So I'm just putting some, just a tiny bit, this is coming out really, really lightly, tiny bit of olive oil. Hello, Miss Judy, how are you? We're just gonna do some pepper first and then salt. Again, you don't even have to do this part because these will go into seasoned meals, at least in my house. <laughs> And then next, would you like us next week to pull one of these containers out and make something from the book? We can do that. We can do that. Show you the full cycle. I'm just rubbing that in there. He says yes. Do you thaw them in the fridge the night before? Um, oh, hi, Audrey. I love looking at your pictures, Audrey. So, Audrey is Aunt Marilyn's daughter, and I used to change her diapers when she was a baby, and now she's a grown up. That makes me feel old. Um, so, yeah, so to, look, ideally, yeah, you want to thaw it in the fridge the night before. That's ideally. Um, Life isn't always ideal, right? So it doesn't always happen that way. So um, other ways you can thaw it are putting it in cool water and just changing the water every few minutes until it's thawed enough to use. Um, clean, cool water, please. Uh, another way is to put it on defrost in the microwave. And uh, you're not allowed to feel old yet. You are in your 20s. You're not allowed to feel old yet. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, tonight we're just prepping the proteins. So we've got 20, what did I say? 23 pounds, I believe, of proteins that we're prepping. So that'll be the equivalent of 23 meals for four. Um, and then 
uh, another way is just like if you're making a chili or a soup or something, just dump in the block of frozen meat. It'll thaw itself in there and then you can just um, serve it. Uh, and then, what did I say? I said water, fridge. Don't ever, don't ever defrost on the countertop though. That's a big no-no because by the time it comes to the point where it's defrosted enough to use, you have been in the danger zone of bacteria for the bacteria growth for way too long. Um, so that is the big, that's the only no-no. You can do it in water, cool water that you change every few minutes until it's defrosted. You do it in the microwave. 30% um, power is considered defrost, so you would turn it and flip it a few times um, until it's defrosted. Or again, obviously, ideally is the fridge, but whoever remembers that. I know I don't. If you make a casserole and have a lot left, can you refreeze? Yes. Yes, you can. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I have definitely done that before. All right, so we've got... I'm going to take these off for just a second. I'm going to put these back over here on our riddle, and I'm going to let this riddle heat up again before we put this back down. So we're going to let the griddle get hot and crusty. My husband gets mad because I get his griddle all nasty and gross, but it does come clean. If you guys have a griddle like this, and you, get, and you do a steak on it, and it gets super crusty and nasty, baking soda and water, baking soda and warm water and a scrub brush will have it off in absolutely no time. Work like a charm. Like a charm. Hi, Miss Lori from Wisconsin. How are you, gorgeous? How are you? All right. So we're getting nice and heated up again because we want that sizzle, sizzle. And I don't know if you can see, but the ring is where the burner is. I'm actually going to cut this last piece in half so that I can put it right on the burner so it goes the best for me. And then you have two choices. You can cut these in big chunks and freeze them in chunks, right? Or... You can slice them and freeze them sliced. I typically will freeze mine sliced, so it's just one less step I have to deal with. But either way works just fine. Right, I'm going to grab clean tongs since we use those on raw meat. Hi, Miss Megan. I'm in the market for a griddle. Which one do you use? This is the Presto Tilt and Grain Griddle. It's, a, it's linked in our Amazon shop. If you, go to the, if you go to our page, modelovesfood.com, at the top it says shop, and that's our, all our favorites, all my favorites, um, fresh tongs, and uh, yeah, or Kelly can give you a link to the direct thing if she's around. All right, how many, we said four pounds of turkey, so since I have a giant family, I actually split my stuff into... Uh, two pounds. So we're going to go ahead and split this in half while these are cooking. I'm just going to scoot this a smidgey poo. Haven't been on for a long time. Oh, Eddie, you're Edie. Is it Edie? You're very sweet. I have not lost weight, but you are very sweet for saying I did. Okay. Oh, we're going to bring this back over here. I'm going to portion these bad boys out. We're going to just do roughly half and half. Hi, Kelly. Oh, you're not talking. You're not talking. I mean, you're talking to Kelly. All right. Now, make sure to remember to label these. Nobody likes a mystery box in the freezer. Mystery freezer items don't typically get eaten. They get thrown away three years from now when you move. Right? We don't want any of that. I'm going to get a better spoon. This one's not great. Alright. Look at this cute spoon I found in the cheapy section at Target yesterday. Isn't that cute? 
I don't know that it's any better than the other one. We won't use it right now, but I thought it was cute. I did. Thought it was cute. Show us your nails. Oh, they're so cute, aren't they? Look, they're sweaters. They sparkle a little, but I don't know if you can tell. Yes, they're press-ons, just like I always wear. <laughs> we still got the German Shepherd Prince Charming. Oh, I love it. So how was everybody's holiday? I haven't seen you since before Christmas, right? Tell me, tell me, did Santa Claus do well by you? Have a good night, Miss Chris. Have a good one. We're going to be done in just a few minutes. I am not going to keep you guys watching me while there are things cooking in the oven. But I did want to show you how really, really simple this is. The steaks are nearly done. The turkey's done. This will be done in roughly 45 minutes. So I'm going to watch a, an episode of Game of Thrones. And then I'll come back and package up the rest of it pretty easy peasy and the chicken will be done in about 15 minutes so yeah. easy peasy lemon squeezy 23 meals ready for measy <laughs> that was terrible rhyming so we go to this um, pediatric dentist my kids do and he's wonderful he's so wonderful dr. King if you guys are in Central Florida and need just a really really amazing pediatric dentist. Go see Dr. King. But he's so funny, he rhymes everything he says to the kids. And I don't know how he does it. I think it's just, you know, a lot of years of practice, but um, he just rhymes and rhymes off the top of his head. <laughs> Sounds like Dr. Seuss. My kids think it's hilarious. My husband does not understand that you need different tools for cooking. He doesn't have to understand, he only has to accept, right? I would never expect my husband to understand me as a person. <laughs> <laughs> but he has to love me and he has to respect me. <laughs> Christmas was nice, good. And your New Year's, guys. And I don't just mean Christmas, the whole holiday season. Whatever you celebrate, I love you. Or what if, even if you don't celebrate, I still love you. Just finished watching you. Kelly, I cannot get into it. I watched the first 10 minutes of you and was like, gag me with a spoon. I need to turn this off. This guy is terrible. I just, the narrating, I couldn't, I didn't get past the weirdo narrating. I didn't like it. We had a great Christmas. I decided from now on we're going to travel and make memories. I love that. I love that. I love that. <gasps> Michelle needs to try the new pro. Yes, you do. Did you, you got a copy of dinner here, all right? I'm pretty sure you do. Pretty sure you are on the list. Okay. Boom. Two dinners prepped. This is like, this is more like three dinners because it'll be two dinners and a solid, solid afternoon of like lunch leftovers for those two things. We'll probably do like egg rolls in a bowl with one and maybe, um, no, that's not true. We'll probably do tacos and chili. Let's check on these bad boys. So these are getting beautiful. Again, we don't want to overcook. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn these on their sides. Just brown the sides real nicely. Aha, he knew it. He knew it. All right, put the tilt on by accident. What brand of press on nails do they last a long time? Yes, um, yes, yes, yes. They are Impress, I-M-P-R-E-S-S. -S. Um, you can look at our Amazon shop. I have them linked there. You can also get them at Target, CVS, Walmart, anywhere that has like a fingernail section. And um, so the tricks are buff your nail before you put them on. Um, put them on, oh, swipe it with acetone, plain acetone. Not like fancy nail polish remover with aloe in it. It's got to be plain acetone. All right, so we're going to put these. We're going to let this rest for a little bit, and then I'll slice it in about 10 or so minutes. And I'm going to slice it. Look at this. You can see the grain really easily in these steaks, right? These are very, very lean steaks. So I'm going to cut against the grain, perpendicular to the grain, very thinly, and they'll be great. They'll be wonderful. Perfect 
for all the things we want to add them to. Ooh, you know what I'm going to do with these? I'm going to do beef stroganoff with these. That's what I'm going to do. The kids are 16 and 8, old enough to retain their memories. Ah, that's perfect, that's perfect, that's perfect. Um, anyway, so you're going to want to buff your nails before uh, putting them on. You want to swipe them with acetone. You can use the alcohol wipes that they come with, but I find that acetone works even better. And then the biggest trick is to put them on right before bed. Put them on right before bed and then go to sleep. That way you don't have time to fuss with them and make them loose. And then I can get mine to last a solid two weeks. And then they start to grow out and look weird. But they never fall off. Alright, our steaks are done. Hopefully not overdone. Just done. Alright, I'm going to set this here and we're gonna put this over here I'm gonna wipe this down here we're seeing a lot of here's <laughs> oh, what uh you guys are talking amongst yourselves I love it I love it making friends making friends all right I'm gonna peek at those chicken uh, thighs and see how we're doing I think these might be done. Let's go ahead and take a peek at them. I'm going to throw a thing here. Let's take a look at these bad boys. Oh, they're gorgeous. All right. We got some beautiful chicken thighs. Look at that. Look at that. They're gorgeous. Okay. So, I'm actually going to, you don't have to do this, this is just me being anal. Um, my husband is good, thanks for asking. I'm gonna go ahead and take a basting brush. I'm gonna baste the top of these with, in the, with their own broth, just so they don't dry out. And then we're gonna let them cool for about 10 minutes before I separate them and put them in their containers. Yay, you guys. Okay, so we just did, in the time that you watched, we did eight pounds of chicken, six pounds of steak, that's 14 pounds, plus five pounds of pork is 19 pounds. No, that's wrong. The pork is in there. We did four pounds of turkey. 18 pounds. We did 18 pounds. How long have we been on, guys? It should say on there. I think we've been on an hour. So we did 18 pounds in an hour, and that includes me talking for about 10 minutes before we started, right? <laughs> and doing all the sharing part. Somebody's gonna have to tell me how long we were on. And, um, yeah. So that's pretty good. And we've got 18 meals prepped and then we've got five pounds of pork in there. 53 minutes, 53 minutes. So it was about 45 minutes total of cook time. Not too bad for 18 meals prepped, right? Again, you don't have to do this part. This is just me being anal. All right, guys. You're gorgeous. Thanks for hanging out. I love you. Go watch another game. I'm... Oh, we'll do the screen cap contest. Guys, grab a screen cap of me looking like a dummy. and Or looking beautiful. That works, too. And drop it in the contest thread. We'll have a contest thread. My house does smell amazing right now. Um, we will have a contest thread in the Mama Loves Food group almost as soon as the show is over. Kelly, Kelly or I will get it up in just a few minutes. Um, you can do two screen caps in the thread. You can, after the show's over, you can rewind and find your favorite screen cap. And um, we'll choose our favorite at the end of the week. Kelly will choose her favorite at the end of the week. I will not be involved. And I will send them Starbucks. Um, also, if you want the book, I'd love if you supported the show and bought a copy of the book, ebook, or physical book. Dinner Hero is out. It is about 50 pages of how to prep your kitchen, how to stock your kitchen, how to cook your proteins, and then 78 recipes on top of that. Um, I really love it. It's gorgeous. This is not just like something I printed on my printer. This is quality cookbook um, paper, um, glossy, beautiful. The binder comes with it. Um, you can get these at dinnerhero.com. I hope you will. And um, yeah, have a great night, guys. You're gorgeous. Thank you for hanging out. Mm -hmm.